What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to dive into the top baits of the month for April. And you know, I've done a couple of these videos throughout the past and I want to really dive into some some things that I haven't dived into necessarily. Of course, there's some some staples of the month of April and and uh and what you need to throw to really be targeting the bass and what's going on. But uh you know, I like to update these every single year because at the end of the day, Things always are changing. Lures and techniques are changing. Some things stay the same, and then some things, um, there's always a new hot technique that's actually transpiring. So let's dive into it right now. So the first thing that I really wanna dive into is sort of how the weather is changing and what's gonna go on in the month of April. There's really a lot of things that transpire in April, and this is the month that everything is just, it's it, it spring is here you can hear the birds you can hear everything's going on and um it's warm outside right here where i'm at right now day one um well april 1st was yesterday and uh it's been warm around here in the southeast um and, and really this is like the month of spawning activity from all the way from georgia out to texas all the way up um, into Indiana um, in the Midwest. I feel like, you know, our biggest, like when I grew up in Indianapolis, um, when I was fishing in Indianapolis all the time, our biggest wave of fish would always come in the full moon, uh, the full moon right there in the late, late April time frame. So this is like the time of year where almost all the fish move up at some point in time um, and do their thing and spawn. Now I do, I do have a thing that I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure if every bass in lake spawns. I, I don't think that's actually factual. I don't think, I think some of the fish just stay out off the bank and eat crawfish and shad and just do their thing. And maybe some of them don't. I know there's been some studies that only a short, a small percentage of smallmouth population actually goes up and spawns. Um, I wonder if it's the same for largemouth. I don't know that. I'm just saying, I don't think all of them do go up in, in every every year and spawn. I maybe maybe they do, but I, I don't, I'm, my gut feeling says no. So. Let's just dive into what like a few of the baits and the first bait that I have not brought out on the channel at all. Uh, well, let's not start on that one quite yet. There's one that I have not brought on the channel yet. So I'm, we'll start on one that I have caught some really big ones. I've caught some big ones in the lake that I'm sitting here and um, on right now. And that is a glide bait. On a Rashi glide, this is probably one of the best time of the year to throw a glide bait because again, the majority of the population is in eight foot of water and less. And, and the, you're not gonna have another opportunity to throw a big bait and a big glide and present it in front of some of the biggest bass in your lake than this month right now. So if you are looking for that trophy, your PB, all that stuff, right now, this is the time to make it happen. Now, we do have a cold front coming up here literally like tonight and tomorrow and it's gonna be cold, but a long-term forecast overall throughout the South and the Midwest looks like it's gonna be cold for a little bit and then it's gonna slowly start to warm up and we're gonna have some really good averages, some not, not too cold the nights and the evenings, and then pretty fairly warm in the afternoons. Um, and I think that that glide bait right there is one that I would highly recommend. Now, as far as like how to fish a glide and like what glides are great, um, my favorite day in and day out is the Arashi glide. I think it's the best glide you can buy for the money. Now, right behind me, I have a hinkle, but those things are like a thousand dollars. So on a budget, I don't think you need to have, I've caught, I mean, I've caught nine pounders, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine pounders. I don't think I've caught one over 10 um, on the Rashi Glide, but this bait right here has caught a ton of good fish. And the whole thing with a glide bait, I'm gonna be honest with you. So you won't be able to see this, but like the whole thing with a glide bait is you like have half turns, like you're gonna twitch, 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 quarter turns, twitch you want stability okay you want stability so for me like i swap those hooks out on the arashi glide um it has good stability and what means what means of stability within a glide is he doesn't roll over on its side that much he has a good stable glide and it's all about like there's choppy glides and there's glides that glide far like side to side and this one's sort of like an in-between so like if you're looking for like a shad glide, like, you know, like maybe like a chad shad or like, you know, some of those baits, like they're typically a lot more sharp, choppy. This bait has a little bit more glide, but he still has the stability you need. Um, so I think it's a really good in-between and a different mix. Um, it, as well as that goes, like I said, I, I do upgrade the hooks. These are actually like one-aughts right here. Um, 
you know, just really pre your own preference of what your hooks you want to really use. But I throw like one ounce on there. Um, if I want to keep my bait down, if I want to keep my bait up, I'll throw like, I'll replace them like size number ones. Um, and that just sort of depends on what's going on. And, and the big key with a glide overall is really weighting it and figuring out. So like me weighting my glide, making sure my, you know, with adding these hooks allows for a little bit to sink a little bit further down and get it in the strike zone, especially if I'm fishing a little rockier banks, steeper banks, but I might have another bait, the same Arashi glide with different, like like uh, shorter or lighter hooks on him where I can glide him up there super shallow as well. So you're gonna have to be really careful, you know, and, and, and they're, they definitely can be, certain glides are definitely weight sensitive. Um, another really good thing about, uh, and one thing I do really like on a glide, it actually has in the hinkle as well, uh, is the rotating hook hangers. I think that's really important. Like when this fish have leverage, you have a big bait, you hook that big fish and you get in the boat. Now, as far as line size, rod, reel, line, all that good stuff, um, I recommend 20 pound line. I thought that suffix advance 100% uh, of fluorocarbon. And uh, to me, that's that's a, you know, that's what I throw. Um, I keep it simple. Uh, this is actually, I think it's an old school six, eight to one gear ratio. Uh, um, paradigm reel but i really throw that 200 right now i've been throwing it on, on a 200 uh x well 200 dc a shimano dc is what i've been throwing as well on um and then yeah so keeping it simple and then the 77 heavy now this is my new select rod it has a really good parabolic bend and so i like this rod is about as good as any rod that i've had um for for not only flipping but really good for a glide as well like a good in between um, glide, it's, it's, it's more of a higher higher modulus blank, but has that parabolic bend, and uh, it does really well for that. So that is that is it for a glide, but if you are looking for um, a glide bait, uh, that bait is really good. And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of game, as well as like where I would sort of focus my energy um, throwing a glide bait this time of year. So let's sort of jump in over here to the Lorance. I'm on a local little lake right here, and I'm gonna zoom in to, let's just say this big creek right here, okay? This is, uh, what is this creek? I forget what it is. Spring Creek, I think it is, up at Watts Bar. So, basically you have a lot, of, you have a main creek channel in the middle, um, you have a couple main pockets and stuff. Um, and if your lake is like a lake that the water's down right now, I typically focus on the steeper banks. The bass will tr typically start to spawn on steeper banks until your water starts to rise. So I'm gonna focus on banks. Like if I'm gonna throw that glide, I'm gonna focus on banks like this guy right here. Your contours are real steep right here. A lot of the bass will spawn on that stuff or places where like there's lay downs and there's some areas where there's fish or stumps. That's a great place to throw a glide and really pull fish off. A glide bait's also really good to be able to find fish and locate fish as well. You might not catch as many fish. Like a good day of gliding, I will say this, a good day of glide bait fishing overall is like um, probably like six, like four to six bites, like four to six fish caught. Got them both. Like, I mean, I've had days I've caught 12 or 15, um, but I've also had days where you blank. <laughs> so it's, it's more, uh, it, it, it's a tease. You get, you get a lot, a lot of big ones that look at your bait, but not a lot of big ones commit. So, but it's an opportunity to generate the biggest fish in the, the and generate a bite from the biggest fish in the lake. And you only get one time a year to do it. So might be a time to pick up that glide. Um, and so steeper banks in this area right here, we're good there. Um, you can fish those shallower flat points. Some of those fish will spawn on shallow flat points as well in the secondary areas like that right there. But that's just the two places that I would start if I was looking to throw a glide bait this time of year. All right, so number two for the month of April is definitely gonna be another swim bait, but it's a swim bait that I've caught a lot of fish on. And this is sort of like a different way, um, sort of going the different spectrum, like a completely different spectrum. Um, and that is the uh, four inch mare, Crush City mare on a belly weighted hook. This one right here is actually, let me see if I can find the, let me find the, the little deal here. Just a belly weight, it's a 316, it's actually a coastal, uh, 360 GT coastal swim bait weighted jig head, or j a hook. And, and so, to me, I go on two different spectrums. Um, a swim bait, it, you know, you, you can see like with a mag draft and other swim baits out there, like, you know, harness type swim baits, bigger profiles like that one, um, that swim baits just get bites around the spawn. Um, Obviously bass still don't, like they're still feeding when they're pulling up there. And it's just one of the best ways to get bit shallow this time of year. Typically the water starts to clean up a little bit in the month of April in a lot of areas. 
and that's when like your spinner baits start to not be as big of a deal and your chatter baits might not be as impactful and the swim bait comes to play a little bit more because it's more subtle still has that good thumping action and good rolling action but you have like this good presence and this one right here is the color it's actually perch color but i'm going to use this more so when the fish are like it's like a bluegilly kind of deal like you know it's a bluegill he's up there swimming around around those fish's beds um so this is going to be a super shallow deal around shallow cover when i feel like those fish are really up there and i feel like they're pushed up really heavily I, a lot of times you see a lot of anglers using swim jigs um chatter baits stuff like that and, and even in, in mag drafts and those kind of swim baits and so downsizing and giving those fish a different look to me has generated some bites over the last couple years i've played around with this and it seems to generate some really key bites um, so that is definitely one way and then the in addition to this i do throw um let's see here if i have him ready to roll right here I do. okay so i do throw like a shad a shad imitator as well um, and this is like a hybrid swim bait, bladed swim bait. Uh, I believe it's like a hybrid swim bait. I just call it bladed swim, swim bait jig. Uh, so HD bladed swim bait. Um, it's basically just a screw lock. This is really good around the late April time frame when the fish are starting to get off beds and the shad start, spawn starts to happen. Um, I really like this. Or even like right now when they're, when they're, these fish are just pulling up and you need a little extra flash, but a spinner bait is too much. I do like this as well. So this is a five out hook with a quarter ounce um, on him. And so you screw lock it in there. Gives a completely different vibe. It's like a it's like a really subtle sp spinner bait is basically what it is. And there you go, like that. And I'll throw them the same way, like probably on a 14 pound line, uh, 14 pound fluorocarbon, reel them around, um, but it gives you a little flash. It, this also is like an, like I said, it's an alternative to where the, like the spinner bait is just too much and too gaudy to generate those bites and the water's too clean. Or if you get into a pressured area like pre-spawn, there's times that these fish will definitely bite this combination better than a spinner bait when they see it all the time or a chatter bait, for instance. So that's something that I would definitely recommend and, it, and it's awesome, an absolute killer when the shad spawn starts to happen because that's exactly what a shad spawn looks like. You have a flashing blade, um, and then you have this swim bait, but the one negative of this is you can't really skip it. So like if I'm around, like that's why I like this setup, like when I'm around their spawn, like if I'm around underhanging bushes, stuff like that, I can skip this fairly well with that blade. It sort of catches the water and it does not. That's the one negative of this setup is you really can't skip them as well. So as far as, um, as far as like where am I going to throw this particular, let's run back to the Lawrence real quick on the sea maps and just sort of give you guys an understanding of what's going down. We're back in that same zone. I'm gonna go more shallow water cover for this. So imagine this lake right here, the water's up, um, water's up on your body of water. There's some flooded, flooded brush, flooded lay down, stuff like that. I'm gonna really start to really focus on those north facing pockets for the first fish that are spawning, like in here. Um, some of these places right here are, are some great places where you're gonna be able to visually see the fish spawning. Um, and then also just like any of like those sticks, those lay downs, those stumps, there's actually stumps right here in the back of this pocket right here. Like that's the kind of stuff that I'm gonna wind that by. Um, any lay downs, of course, work pretty well. I think I think a lot of times, but and, and, and once you get further back in some of these places, like these little cut banks and stuff like that, when the water's up, those fish will just spawn on the gravel and the pea gravel right there, and you can just wander around this. Any little shallow cover, you're just basically covering water, and it's a way to generate bites and not have to visually like look at the fish and slow down. Like if you're like me and you want to be able to cover water and still generate bites around the spawn, that's a great bait to get bites and to have an opportunity to catch the big fish in the lake. All right, number three for the month of April is one of my favorite things to do, and that is to flip shallow cover. Um, and flipping and pitching is something that, like, I think a lot of times we talk about flipping, and we're actually talking about pitching. And what I mean by that is, let me grab my little pitching rod right here. You know, the original flipping, when you hear flipping, it is, you grab the line, your close quarters, pitch your bait out, you basically flip your bait out there. So it's, you don't see many people do that anymore. Like every once in a while, close quarters, typically the water has to be really dirty to do that. Um, but, but pitching is what you see more people do. Pitch out there, let it hit the bottom, hop it around. That is what you see most of the time. And that is what I'm talking about right now. Now, as far as flipping and pitching, to me, the bait 
that I have fell in love with over the last couple of years um, is this Bronco bug. And this is a bait by the new bait by Crush City. Um, and, and there's a lot of different creature baits out there, but to me, I like it because it has a lot of different action, has a unique action, um, has that more of that undulating action like a crawfish, but also can, can imitate a bluegill um, and does both of those very well. It gives a little bit of a unique action that not a lot of baits have, and it really truly can trigger some good fish in a body. But the one thing that I will say when you are pitching or flipping this time of the year, is to make sure, I, I typically go lighter in weight. And what I mean by that is, so I have a peg on here. Right now it's a 5 16 so actually it's been chewed all the heck. I've been fishing all weekend long with this exact setup. This is probably my favorite color in the Bronco Bug. It's the green pumpkin on top. It's watermelon on the belly. It has like a dark, it's got a cool little contrast, green contrast. Um, to me, it, it, lighter weights, quarter, I mean, I'm gonna start either, if I'm in heavy cover, I'm gonna throw a 5 16 like heavier cover, 5 16 and, and if I'm in like like sparse stuff, I'm gonna throw like a quarter. And the reason for this is, is just you're just so much like the fish, um, typically for me, when they're spawning, you that lighter weight allows them to have a little more time to react. And I, I don't know why, like you see like a stick worm and stuff like that, lighter weights typically, like I, somewhere on the spawn, it just seems to generate more bites for me. Um, so going to the quarter ounce tungsten, this is a VMC tungsten right here. Quarter, uh, five sixteenths, or a two, one, two punch. You know, I'll go down to a three sixteenths, but that's sort of where I stay at. You can go up to a three eighths or a half if you're fishing around on some of that stuff. But to me, those are the ones I'm gonna roll with. Now, as far as hook goes, I'm a big fan of a straight shank. And, and this hook right here is the uh, the red line straight shank. Um, this is the, like a, I think it's the heavy cover flipping hook. Um, and, and it has a resin little keeper right here. It has a little prong, um, little keeper right there to sort of keep your baits up there. I'll grab a new Bronco bug because I've been, I've caught three, three bass on that one right there. Um, and so it just, you know, go in there, text expose him, get him, get him, get him through, go through, and hook him up like that, like so. Okay, so I will give you guys a little bit of game before I do that. Let me do this real quick here. Let me show you something, and and something that a, a, a actually a, a, a subscriber to the channel pointed out, and, and it's very it's factual. Um, like when you tie your hook on, okay, you tie your hook on for like say a flipping hook, um, or a drop shot hook or anything else. Um, when you go where your line tie or your, your, your line tie is pointed towards you and you go from the hook point in to start try to try to tie a palm or not, I'll show you what it does. I'll just show you guys real quick here. Let's tie it real quick. It won't take too long. I'll tie this real quick and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So how, I, okay. So let me cut him real quick. So when I go and I put weight on that hook, let me see here. See, like that weight on that hook, it almost, it's a reverse kick. So if that, so if I put that weight and I push down on it, he wants to kick back, right? So like I'll show you. He kicks back a little bit. Now, if I go the opposite way, and I cut him off, and I start, and you'll notice it like, like on a drop shot, like if you want him to stand up straight, or like a drop shot, like you do the same thing. You start with your hook point, pointing outward, tie him up. I tie a polymer real quick here. Bop, da, bop, da, bop, da, bop. Wet him, cut him. Now I'll have to roll. Tie him up. See, I kicks up. He kicks forward. So it's it's a subtle difference. It's not as big of an impact of like a snelled hook if you do it the reverse way. I've done that before. If you snell a hook the wrong way, it'll actually kick back, like like way back, or it kicks forward. But this does seem to make an impact. You know, it also it also depends like if it's like, I guess if it's like that, it, it's gonna go kick back. But like if you actually have it straight on your line, like like so, it'll it'll actually kick forward. So that's 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 what I'm just something that I played with and something that does seem to matter a little bit is tying your line on and or tying your your hook on that way. Okay, so as far as rod reel line, um, this is the uh, Shimano uh, 150. I think it's a 
is it? Oh, it's an HG. So it's a 7 to a 7 4 to 1 gear ratio. Um, I like an XG typically, but, but this is this is uh, it's a good reel. I, I mean, SLX is a really good reel. A lot of them. Shimano makes consistently one of the better reels out there on the market, and I mean that's why I have a few Shimanos. I have a few just just a hodgepodge of stuff. Either it's a Shimano or it's an old school uh, paradigm. So that's that's what I throw day in and day out, um, and that's a good all around reel, a seven four to one gear ratio, seventeen pound flipping line. Uh, this is four carbon. This is the hundred percent uh, the the uh, the, the suffix advanced uh, suffix advanced four carbon to me that's a you know really good line 17 pound that four aught VMC uh, strength chain hook and uh, and that seven seven heavy action rod so that's one of my favorite flipping rods again as well doubles over as a glide bait as, as a swim bait rod it works really well for multiple different purposes and it's one of my favorite all around rods so that is it for number well actually hold on, let's, let me jump into Hold on one second. Let me jump into real quick here to the map. And we're gonna look at a couple things in sort of the same, like where am I gonna utilize this? And, and, and I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm gonna give you sort of both again. One, uh, I'm actually gonna go to a different area of like, okay, let's just go in this pocket. Cause typically you're gonna wanna get into a creek arm or some, 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 some kind of creek arm. Water's low, I'm gonna focus in on, you know, the steeper banks, you know, transitions, stuff like that with lay downs. It's always a place where the first ones are gonna spawn. And then if the water's up, I'm gonna look at more so like, again, in the backs of those flatter creeks and flatter pockets, they typically, the bass will not spawn. If you have a lake, the water is, is uh, they want deep water access. Those bigger ones day in and day out to me want deep water access and closer to deep water. So like those deeper banks, that, that seems to generate, like those bigger fish tend to stick, even if in a, inside of a pocket. Like if I go down through here inside the pocket and there's a little bit of steep, a steepness to there the, the contour gets a little closer right there those are great little places where i'm going to pitch that that bronco bug up there um, or the back sides of docks do not forget if your lake has a lot of docks the walkways are a lot of times the key in generating spawning fish into biting like pitching that bait out there pitching that flipping bait out there and, and, and getting a lot of bites doing that as well so back sides of docks those steeper banks lay downs that is what I'm going to focus on this time of year, um, and and it's going to be a great flipping flipping month. So that is number three. Let's jump on to the next one. Okay, next on the list is definitely one that gets a lot of. It's a it's a very popular lure that catches a lot of fish. I don't think I feature this one on my channel um, quite yet. And then something that I was sort of skeptical on, but it seems to generate a lot of bites. Um, but there are some tricks to it to, to generating bites on that bait. Um, and that bait is da -da -da -da, the mag draft. Okay, so um, this is a mega bass mag draft. It's just a line through swim bait. It's a good swim bait. Uh, there's several other ones that are pretty good. Um, ben Milliken's Hangover Shad. I've got a few of those. The heavier ones I like. Um, the ones that uh, Freddie makes, the Freddie Boom Boom swim baits, are pretty good too. Um, but, you know, I always have one of those tied on and right now i have this one tied on right here um the one thing i was skeptical about is it does seem like the baits roll a little bit like what i mean by like that is it's hard to tune them i never realized this so i would buy all these swim baits these mad drafts like first off and you throw them in the water you start to reel them and then they de turn over on the side and like this thing's horrible right i know you've got somebody's done that because i i did that and then and then someone had told me like you got to tune them I'm like tune them yeah, tune them. So literally, you have to adjust the harness inside of the head to make the bait roll right, or like not turn over. So like if it's turned to the left or turned to the right, you got to like adjust that. And I'm like, no way. So then I'll get, get them back out and I throw them like, all right, that's actually a pretty good bait. So I guess it's all depending on what it is, but it is a good bait. Um, and it's one, you know, like I always, it, this is the time of year, like a harness swim bait. Um, it's just really good. Like you can cast it around if you want a bit bigger profile. Um, and that's not too big, it's like a six inches bait. But if you want a little bit bigger profile, you're not trying to go finesse, say the wind's blowing really hard, like right it is like right now, the wind's blowing in this pocket. Um, you have cloudy conditions, you have prefrontal um, conditions. Like this is a great opportunity to throw a bigger profile bait um, and draw those fish from a little bit further away. As far as, uh, you know, where I throw this bait, you know, I think you can just run out of the bank with it. That's what's cool about it is, is it's just a deal, again, you know, if they're not gonna, if you're wanting to go the more finesse approach, that smaller profile, somebody like the four inch mare, but if you're going for like a bigger, uh, a bigger uh, 
profile and, and more drawing power, then a mag draft might be the option for you. So that's sort of the one two punch. I throw it on 17 pound line, a 7.3 medium heavy action rod. It's really not that heavy of a bait. A lot of people like to skip this bait around docks and stuff. I don't know, like I, I don't think personally skips that great. I think it works really well like around rock transitions and like going down the bank and just running on the bank and reeling it around. Um, I think it skips okay, but I don't think it like skips phenomenally. So if you're a big dra mag draft or you know, line through swim bait guy, uh, skipping and skipping around, then then you might be the guy. But that is definitely uh, a bait that I recommend and one that has caught some fish. And, and remember that little trick. If 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 that bait, let me just do this real quick so I can remember exactly what it is. So basically, let me throw it out there. This one is swimming to the right. He's he's like sort of to the right a little bit. Let me think. I think you got to turn him to the left. Let me make sure if that sends right. So I can just tell you guys right now. He's definitely to the left so let me go a little bit more okay turn him a little more yep that's it okay so that is it so if he's swimming to the right turn him to the left you know that is uh he's swimming he's swimming like sort of like this you want you know he's swimming like that a little bit you gotta you gotta tune him to the opposite side and um now it swims, it swims straight. It was a little, a little like this. <laughs> he was swimming on his side. It looked too dang cool. So that that is definitely one right there. That 20, uh, 17 pound line. It seems like it's enough. I mean, I know people throw a 14. Seems to work really well. And it's not too big a profile bait. Like I said, it's not too big a profile bait, but gets bites. I got this on this 200 uh, 200 DC right now. I, you don't need that big of a bait, a reel for these. Like even a 150 size, like an XG or, um, I think you know. I don't know if I'd throw an XG, but I would definitely either throw like something like this guy right here, the HG, um, or the OG, like even like a six, six to one, two to one gear ratio, that'd be fine. That's LX, like anywhere in that, like it'd be fine. Like that's that lower gear ratio to like a seven to one. That's probably what I roll with. I think it's a, it's a little fast on this guy. So those are the, uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good bait and definitely catches a lot of fish and is one I wanted to add to the arsenal. As far as like where I'm gonna throw this bait, I, it's really super versatile. So like it doesn't have to be, like I'll go over here. Let me go to a different part of the lake right here. Just let's just see, let's go up in here. All right, we're going into this, this creek arm. You got a steep bank right here. I might even, I mean, you, the cool thing about this bait is if they're up shallow, you sort of get an idea of what's going on. So I might start like right here in this little pinch point and then slowly go to these transition where it gets flatter and flatter, come in this pocket right here nothing okay let me see it says stumps right in there that's cool it's good to know i might pop back over here on this corner and you're going to figure out if they're more main lake now this is the one thing that you have to understand for the month of april not all the bass spawn at once i think we try to make that like i'm really bad about that i'm gonna be honest with you I'm, it's one of my weaknesses like i try to make it like i'm gonna run to the back of the pocket and catch all the bass because they're all in the back of the pocket they don't all spawn at once they're not all them bass out there on that main channel and that main lake didn't just slide up in this pocket now they are going to eventually at some point in time spawn but the one thing that we have to realize is there's progressions that could trickle spawn like there could be a wave that pulls up in here and then they spawn like on these steeper banks and then all of a sudden the water comes up two more feet and they spawn on the flatter stuff there's there's progressions and then all of a sudden a week later there's bass spawning on that main lake so there's fish that are staging and pre-spawning and you just got to figure that out and that like a, a glide and that and that that mag draft and the swim baits like that that's covering water allow you to sort of figure out where the bass are at because you could just wind it so fast and cover a lot of water um and you have drawing power so you know typically i'll put my trolling motor down when i'm throwing that bait start on the pre-spawn stuff slide into some spawning stuff and get a vibe for what's going on and then i will react and throw it in those places um wherever that may be so that's that's my tidbit on that um, and that is the next bait. So on to the next bait on, uh, yeah, on the next one. Next bait is going to be a bed fishing bait. I, I've never really talked about this in the top five baits of the month is bed fishing. And, and this is the time of year to generate, like I've caught um, an 11 pounder. My biggest bass I caught on Lake Chikamago was caught off the bed. I caught him like, it's like the first week of April. It was like a giant one. And it was like, I was shaking when I saw it. I actually have a video on the channel that I, when I caught it, and uh, man, it's it, there's something about like catching a big one off the bed. Like it's, it's a time of year when them big giant ones get up there, and and uh, it's so cat and mouse. And when you get this fish to actually commit, large mouth can be tough. I mean, I 
I remember seeing like it's like five years ago. I remember seeing one like 13 or 14 on the bed that same day I caught the 11. And um, she swam out. I was like from here, like I was 50, 60, probably 70 feet away from that fish. And I'm out in front of it. And I could see it was up on a super shallow bed. And she, the male's up up there with her. And she she sees me like, like it's crazy how well she could see. She saw me or heard me and she swam out to me and looked at my, tr and swam right next to me. Like I could have like thrown a net out there and caught her. And she looked at me like, yeah, I know you're here. And I'm like, what the heck? So they're, especially the big ones, they are uh, very hard to catch at times. And uh, they're only up there for typically a couple days or a day and a half. And then they're typically back out and gone. And so that's why it's a, it's a very, um, it, it, it's, it's a very day-to-day -day situation. If they decide to move up and those fish are up there and they're all over the, you know, all up there and the females are there, it could be one of those magical days that like every big one's up there on the bed. I think the next day I caught a nine and a seven on a glide that, that next day. And, and like water was dirty the next day because it got dirty, you know, rain came and I caught a nine or something. So it was like a magical moment where like all these big ones flooded the bank. But anyway, so bed fishing overall, uh, it's a way that a lot of tournaments are won this time of year. A lot of big ones are caught. And typically I keep it fairly simple. Um, there's a lot of different techniques and different ways you can catch them. You can catch them on a drop shot, catch them on a wacky one, catch them on a lot of different things, catch them on a Texas rig. But to me, my two favorite types of deal. I love to throw it as a crawl type bait. Keep it simple and I have two. So I'm either going to throw like uh, a crawl, smaller profile, three and a half inches of a cleanup crawl. Um, this is a white one. This is a, a green pumpkin magic one. So to me, uh, color does matter. And I think that at times, like I like white because ultimately if I can see that bait and, and, and they're going to react okay to it, then I know that fish has got it in the mouth. And like, then I can set the hook and I know I'm not hooking that fish outside the mouth. And that's really, really important because if you obviously, if you catch a fish outside the mouth in a tournament, it does not count. Um, and you know, at least in, in, while you're sight fishing. And so that's really important. And that's why a lot of times I might even fire them up with the green pumpkin magic. And why I like green pumpkin magic so much to me is because it has, it's green pumpkin, of course, it's natural, but then it has the silver flake. And so it sort of looks bluegilly. You know, it looks like a bluegill sort of flash to him. Um, which I think irritates them and gets them fired up a little bit more. Now, the one thing I'll give you guys a tidbit on this is like the one thing that I typically will do is I don't try to catch the male um, if I'm trying to catch the female. Like I'll try to shake the male off several times. Like uh, there was a point in time where I caught uh, the biggest fish. Uh, I actually won $50,000 sight fishing at heavy hitters. And I shook the male off for like 25 minutes straight. Like, dunk, swim it. And then every time the female would come up there to like, cause a lot of times like the female, like the male wants to do all the work. He's like, I got it, I got it, I got it. And the female's like, look, she's big. She could take care of things. The female will go up there and look at it and, and he would go run over there and eat it, you know? And, and you're like, gosh, dang it, get off, get off. And it was a three pounder. And I pitch out there again and that fish, like that male goes to bite it and it comes out of his mouth and the female eats it. I set the hook and it's a seven, like a seven pounder and I win $50,000 on that fish. So that was the craziest bed fishing story that I've ever had, like of catching the biggest, like that fish. Uh, uh, but that was like pretty special. Cause like you, it's a cat and mouse game. And then finally that fish committed. And then the next pitch I caught out there, I pitch out there, every fish counts. So the next pitch I went out there, the male went over there, ate at the hook, let him go. And he was right back on the bed, like 10, uh, 10 seconds later after I caught him. So it was a cool deal, but yeah, I caught that one on a white bait after I fired him up on more of that green pumpkin. And I think profile matters as well. The other one thing that I will give you a tidbit on um, is, is like sometimes minnow profiles can, can make those fish react and actually bite pretty well. But day in and day out, 90% of the bed fish that I will be catching will be on um, a crawl style bait, like this guy right here, the cleanup crawl. And, and it's just like either green pumpkin or white. Keep it simple, don't get too, it's more about your boat positioning, staying away from those fish, not letting them know you're there. The one other thing that I will say as far as like line size doesn't seem to matter too much. I do throw 17. Um, this is that straight shank hook, that red line BMC that I use. 3 8 ounce weight right here. Um, and you see that this is not pegged, okay? 
That to me is a big deal when you're bed fishing because what happens is that weight hits the bottom and that bait sort of just fl like flails around and it's weightless almost. It's almost like a free rig if you will. And so that bait hits the bottom and it goes down and it's sort of like around there and when they bite it, they don't like to feel that heaviness of the bait. So like a lot of times they'll go like and they'll grab the tail like this guy right here, they'll grab the tail and then they'll grab him, they'll grab him and it's not much weight there, right? It's because it's like separated. And then you set the hook and you catch the fish. So that to me is, a, is something that you gotta, I, I really like to do. Now, sometimes you have to have it pegged. This one is pegged right here because it came off that flipping rod. Um, it's pegged right here. And sometimes you need that if it's really heavy cover and you need to make that right pitch. But that's the two, the two bed baits and that is some, some of the game. I mean, I threw you guys some, some goods right there um, for sure. Uh, on this one, on the, on the bed fishing aspect of it. But I will show you just sort of like some of the things that I look for. Just a simple pot, this is simple right here. Um, if jumping into the actual lake and, and, and going over here to that sea maps and looking at what's going on. Like to me, I just put the troll, similar to like what I was talking about, like you don't, there's a lot of places that I didn't realize bass spawn. All right, so like, yeah, sometimes bass spawn in the back of the pockets, like these guys right here. And yeah, that's most obvious. First thing you're gonna need is water clarity. You're gonna need to be able to see a couple feet down most of the time, like, you know, just to be able to actually see what's going on. So, you know, obviously pockets, places the cleaner water's at on your body of water is gonna be really important. Then the next thing is, if I had to recommend, number two, have probably have some lithium batteries if you're gonna go troll down the bank all day and looking for them. You're gonna need some, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's part of it. Or make sure your your uh, your AGMs uh, or your lead acids are fully charged. That is a very important part of that. So make sure you do that. Um, you're gonna need some really good sunglasses. Of course, um, these guys right here are the sunglasses that I designed with Wiley X, and that is something that you're gonna need as well. A good pair of sunglasses. And no matter what brand you use, okay? To me, this is really, really important when you're sight fishing. A thicker band so when you're, when you're sight fishing, you're wanting to block out all the sun. So you need that thicker band on your, um, as far as for, to block that, those rays of the sun out and block that sunlight out um, in the light out overall to where you can see further and deeper into the water. And that's why I like this frame. Like to me, that's the best frame, that Omega frame is the best frame to where I can actually see further down the water and then you couple that with a Captivate lenses and a higher quality lens, you're gonna get more, you're gonna see six inches further than the next guy. And that's a big deal when you're sight fishing. That really makes a huge impact when, you know, I find two more fish or three more fish that you might have missed because of higher quality lens. And that, and that does matter. So that is right there, a good pair of sunglasses. Um, and then just uh, make sure you, ha you know, and just have fun, have fun. You don't have to catch the biggest fish in the lake. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent. If I'm out there fun fishing, I'm, I just catch way, catch way, catch way release, catch way release, catch and release. I'm trying, not, I'm trying not to, uh, to take those fish off the bed, you know, for the most part, leave them alone, let they're doing the thing, catch them, put them back, let them do his thing and roll out. So that is, uh, that is one of my favorite ways to catch bass, but, uh, it, and it's just probably the best month to do so. All right. So next on the list, you guys know, I can't stop uh, making a cast and you can't, this is the fact, okay. If you're still with me, I brought this one last because I have brought it on the channel before. Uh, and because it is a wacky worm. I mean, you guys know, I know, if there is one bait for the month of April, one, it's going to be a wacky worm. I mean, when the bass are shallow, when they're spawning, when they're shallow and doing their thing, a wacky worm just generates more bites than about any other lure out there. I think a floating worm would be another one that I would add into here. I think I've done that before as well, like two years ago possibly. But it's definitely one uh, that just generates a lot of bites. You can fish it shallow, you can pitch it around, you can, uh, a stick worm, you can Texas rig it. It's a super versatile deal. You can Nico rig it. It, it's something about that profile that generates big fish into biting and it's like a finesse application but it's like a slow fall but then you can also like it just it has so many applications that you can catch a lot of fish on so wacky worm is uh now this one's actually a stick worm that's not out yet can't tell you all the name the whole scenario about it all this stuff but it was one that i've designed i mean you're getting a little bit of a sneak peek now i i played around with a lot of wacky worms and, and stick worms in my pool over the last couple of years um, and I've decided like what I personally like. And so like to me, I like a little bit faster rate of fall. I like a little bit more salt. Um, I, like, I like a really good shimmy. And um, 
and so yeah so that's what i designed you guys are getting like that first look at what's going on right here i don't even know if i can do like the the i can't even give you guys more of a look than, than this right here because like this is just is what it is but anyway so that being said um there is two ways like that i i rig um you know a, a stick worm this time of year uh i do prefer throwing a one knot when i can get away with it i don't think that big of hook really matters when you have a little bit bigger profile like stick worm um i really also like a bigger hook um for several different reasons i'll use a size one uh finesse nico hook or a, a, a weedless nico hook as well um in redline um but it just depends on what you prefer so i am using if you guys have not seen this cool tool it's called a crossover pliers and crossover rings you can sort of see right here in the center of this guy right here this is a five millimeter right in the center um and there's a little pouch right there to where you can just put him on there um and that guy is really awesome because he has two channels one goes uh parallel and perpendicular to the one so one goes per parallel, one goes perpendicular. So if you are Nico rigging, you can just go right ahead and go uh, parallel and you can hook him up. Always, when I put the hook, or I put the weight into the actual worm, um, I always, I typically want my hook point up because when I'm shaking it and it's hitting the bottom and it's like pecking like a bluegill wood or anything else, like I don't want that debris to be getting on my hook point see what i'm saying so that's really important to me as well um but if i am now we'll say this though so you're you, it's a good it's a good thing as far as um being able to save your plastics with having the crossover ring there's more surface that this crossover ring is actually um taking uh like sort of trapping in there i guess you would say like sort of having a hold of it has a better grasp because it's like a versus an o-ring an o-ring doesn't have that much of a that band is not as large so it doesn't have so it's a little bit more durability the one thing that i will say if i'm like really 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 fickle on things i i, I try to play with it um and i will sometimes every once in a while just stick it on there if i get lazy and i don't want to use that um, i'll just stick a this, these are all prototypes prototypes the protos I'm supposed to get some new ones here pretty soon um and so then i'll sometimes like stick it on there the problem when you do that with any kind of solid stick worm that's really like the right action to me um you're just not you're gonna cast it off eventually but the other thing about that is is when you cast it off or you maybe you don't cast it off but like when a fish bites it and hook and you hook them a lot of times it'll rip off and then you just have a straight hook so there is advantages to that but you're going to go through five times as many worms so money's not an option you can always hook them like this <laughs> if money is more of an option you're like look i gotta i gotta save it uh you know save things i i do recommend those crossover ring with the clock crossover rings with the crossover pliers i do recommend that very much so this is a new line that's not out yet either i'm always tinkering you guys will see things from time to time that i'm working on with suffix or or crush city but because you follow the channel of course i'm gonna give you guys the inside scoop you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to give you guys a little bit of something that's not everybody gets to see, you know? 10-pound um, line for my leader line. I, I sort of keep it consistent with that. I like 10. Like, I don't I, – listen, John Cox and a lot of other anglers, John Cox said something the other day, like we were at Redcrest, and he was like, dude, I had to throw, like, six-pound line and to give him a bite. I'm like, really? So, like, he swears up and down on, on, on lighter line. I personally have not seen it make a huge impact. But to some people it does, some people it doesn't. And confidence is everything. So if it matters to you, then you probably need to keep doing it. And if it doesn't, then try the 10-pound line because you don't break off nearly as much than you do on that ladder line. So that is what it is. Seven foot medium action. The same rod that I shake and bake with this is a rod a lot of times I will use up here shallow. And uh, that's it. That is all I have for you all. I just want, if you are still with me, thank you so much. Hey, if you're still with me, drop a comment and let me know what your favorite thing on this video is. I just want to know how many people are actually still with me. You watch the whole video, drop a comment and let me know. Because I'm always interested in saying that. I gave you guys some goods. I apologize for missing uh, February and March. So like, I apologize for not giving you guys that. So I'm bringing extra to this one right here and hopefully you did learn something. I feel like um, if, if you didn't, then I gotta step my game up. 
I got, I got some, I got some more work to do. So I got to go back to the drawing board. So let me know how everything went and uh, good luck in this month of April. I got a feeling several of you are going to crack your PB.